Hey everyone, welcome to GVN Interviews. My name is Mike Vaughn, and I am really excited to say that I am talking to producer of VHS 99, Josh Goldblum. So thank you so much. Um, like, I know we've been talking for a while, so this is kind of awesome that we can actually, as you were just saying, like put a face to a, to a handle. So uh, yeah, um, so I, probably seen VHS 99 like three or four times right now um, at this time. <laughs> um, so uh, jumping right in, I was kind of curious, um, you know, VHS 94 was definitely um, a pretty big hit. How long after that were you all like, okay, we need to do like a follow-up in, in like the 99, like the 90 series? I mean, it's a good question. Um, God, it, it, it's so much fun to play in this sandbox. Um, so I think as a group, myself, Brad Miska, Radio Silence, and David Bruckner, it, we would jump at any opportunity at any given time um, to go out there and support the filmmakers that we love, um, you know, in these types of ways. So I think right away, I mean, we probably had discussions while we were making VHS 94, like what could potentially come next, right? But it's uh you kind of want to see through the process and make sure that the audience responds um and when we saw how the audience responded to vhs 94 we kind of knew we would want to jump in that 90s playground again nice and listen we all got a hail ratma <laughs> <laughs> um which uh, yeah huh i said well can i curse sure i can curse this is just youtube right yeah. i don't want to like I don't want to demonetize you. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, yeah, go for it. <laughs> sorry, Marissa. <laughs> um, so oh, now, good, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, what? I, it, it's interesting. You were just talking about like directors and wanting to champion like filmmakers you really like, and what I think is really awesome. Um, not only is VHS 99 such a, a fun movie, but it has a lot. Um, I double checked to make sure this was right, but like none of these directors had worked in the VHS franchise before. Um, so that's really awesome. Was that a deliberate choice to like bring on some like fresh blood as it were? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, again, it's just, it, it's so important for us to support the filmmakers that we love and wherever possible to provide that platform. I think it works both ways, right? It's like, you know, we can't make these movies without the filmmakers that are involved. And, you know, we also recognize that we're in a pretty special position um, to be able to provide that platform for them to create. So, yeah, I mean, long story short, we want to bring in as many filmmakers as we possibly can. Right. It's like to us, it's just like building a team over time. Um, every now and again, there's, there's, there's certain voices that you do want to bring back just because you know, they work so well within the sandbox. Uh, this time around, you know, I think it was a mix of just happenstance and us focusing on finding filmmakers that we knew we wanted to see um, play within the VHS world. Um, yeah, and it's a stellar lineup. Like, it, it's, I was actually kind of having a hard time, like, picking what my favorite segment was, because they're also really great. And I think that's kind of what's similar to VHS 94, which was, uh, they were all just so stellar, and they all brought something really interesting and unique, like nothing felt redundant or repetitive. Um, yeah, it's um i mean look it all starts for us with log lines right that's what we ask for filmmakers to to deliver we we basically we, we basically set the um the example or the model of like hey this is vhs 99 these are themes that we would like to explore um these are the sensibilities that like we're looking for you to provide within that context bring us whatever the hell you want right yeah and 
I would say nine out of 10 times, the initial log line is what we approve. And then that moves to a treatment, right? Because it's like the film, like the one thing we don't need to worry about with any filmmaker is the creativity that they're going to be able to bring to the table. So, you know, we always have ideas. It's funny going in of like locations or like, you know, scary sequences or, you know, things that we want to present. And then the filmmakers come on board and just like, it just bring, bring something entirely new to the table that just wows all of us. So it, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a pretty simple process, right? It's log lines, it's treatments. And then we go to the script phase and we help the film, we assist the filmmakers along throughout the treatments, present new ideas. Um, we all work together and then they go off and, and, and they script it for us. That's that awesome. question? I feel like I just went off on a tangent. No, no, that's, that's awesome. Like I, it's interesting because I was, it, it sort of uh, answered what I was also going to ask, which was how much creative input do you have with the filmmakers or do you more or less just let them go off and, and do, you know, what they sort of log lined. Um, you know, with, with VHS 94, since I've come into the mix at VHS with VHS 94, um, well, I think the one thing that we tried to do was create a bit more of a hands-on process um, with the filmmakers. So making sure it, instead of us just kind of like farming out segments, right. And sending filmmakers money and saying, Hey, just go do what you want to do. Um, we really attempted to all be a part of the process all the way through with them. And, you know, I was on set for, for two months from, from, uh, from April, you know, through the end of May arms. Yeah. Through the end of May, um, setting up production, making sure that they had the crews that they needed. Uh, and so uh, that's, what's really exciting for me too, is just making sure that like we are surrounding the filmmakers with the pieces that they need. Right. We, the, the first question that I ask, because chemistry is so important, is who do you want as your DP? Who do you want as your editor? Who do you want as your costume designer, art director? And, you know, they get first crack at it and anything that they can't bring to the table or if there's anybody that's unavailable or if they don't know certain positions, that's where we all work together to introduce people into the mix. But um, so, yeah, it's a bit different than like VHS 1, VHS 2 and VHS 3, where it was... It was, it was a bit of all farm outs mm -hmm. here. Um, we focus as like an actual production. Uh, with that said, there are a few segments that we wanted to go back to that style of run and gun, you know, mm -hmm. without the constraints of like a full production behind you. And uh, um, that's also really fun, you know, because it's th there is the ethos, I think, of VHS or so the mindset of like creativity and just doing things the way that you want to do it. It's so, it's so raw. And I think that's why audiences appreciate it. Right. Like obviously we have um, a pretty extensive post process, but we're not trying to get in there and, and we don't have test audiences, you know, we're, we, we do provide notes as producers, but like clearly we want to make sure that it's the filmmaker's vision all the way through and I don't think they uh, they get that opportunity very often, you know, to uh, to go through that type of process. So I think that's what's so exciting. It's kind of like a palate cleanser for a lot of filmmakers, right? To just be able to go out there and do whatever they want to do. So I, I think whenever possible, we we don't get in their way. We we just try to help them see through their visions. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Like it definitely sounds like you really give um, the filmmakers you know, um, like all the, like, as you said, all the tools they kind of need to like be as awesome as they can be. And it really shows because everybody brings something so unique and interesting, yet it all feels very coherent. Like it does feel like, even though there's not a real narrative in the segment, I mean, with like threading the, the segments together, it does feel like one whole coherent, like anthology, which I love. Yeah, it's, it, you know, that part is like, it's really difficult. We're always trying to figure out new ways to to create that wraparound or connect the dots between all of the segments. Um, we don't want it to just kind of feel like a variety show. We yeah. want to, we want it to feel like there is some sort of connective glue to it. I think this time around, it was more of like, hey, wraparounds are tough, man, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, we just didn't want to put the filmmakers in the position of having to it's not so much being the head of the snake, but 
it's a lot to ask, right? Um, and so, you know, here, look, I, it's it's interesting to watch um, in real time because like our model in our heads was we wanted to replicate the experience of just finding an old VHS tape and every program has been taped over each other. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's like when you used to watch like a TV movie and then like all of a sudden it would just cut out and it's just whatever was like the base layer of tape that it taped over and then it would just kind of like glitch back. And that's kind of what we were going for, um, you know, with 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 Tyler's segment with the Gawkers was just like, hey, here's 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 a piece of home footage. Whoever edited these segments onto these tapes, you know, clearly found a tape and taped over it. And so that's what we were just trying to replicate. Yeah, no, I, I love that. It's it's such an interesting thing because, you know, again, in the early, you know, VHS series, uh, it was very different um, with like, I believe the first one was just like, you know, finding a bunch of tapes and each tape was a segment. So I love how from the, from the beginning to now it's really evolved into something really interesting. Um, I mean, man, going back to like VHS 94, you know, David Bruckner had such a fucking wonderful script, right? Uh, he Initially, David was doing the wraparound to VHS 94 and Jennifer took a lot of the sensibilities and, 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 and ideas from David's initial script. But what we were trying to do was create a VHS where the filmmakers kind of shared certain storylines protagonists and there was a bit more of a crossover right so like initially in david's say in, in david's uh script radio silence was going to come in direct the same actors within his same world but just do the grand finale so like radio silence would essentially have the last 15 minutes of the movie but i mean long story short that's what's really fun for us as producers is as we move forward with the vhs series is like what are our framing devices, right? Like what else can we do within this world? How else can we connect the dots on these segments, whether to make them more meaningful or to create better flow um, or even sometimes just to make it feel a little bit more realistic. Yeah. And again, I, I think that's so awesome that you're, you're, it definitely seems like you are pushing how to, you can do these framing devices. And, and like I said, with, with, um, VHS 99, I, I love how it's done so cleverly. Like I'm definitely like a product of, you know, renting tapes. Um, you know, my joints hurt because uh, I'm old now, but, you know. Um, so, um, you know, the, um, you know, Ratma was definitely the standout character for VHS 94. And without spoiling it, he may or may not make a little cameo in, in VHS 99. Um but I'm kind of curious, is, is there ever like, or or is there a possibility that that character might come back in like a future VHS installment? Oh, hell fucking yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> if we can make that happen. I mean, look, we're always talking about it behind the scenes, right? It's like, you know, if people want to see a Ratma movie at some point, we'll deliver a Ratma movie. But look, that's... Uh, I got all Chloe. I mean, she's one of the most brilliant and just like special artists I've ever worked with. And I know she loves the character. Um, she's obviously got a really incredible career ahead of her. And so I think when it's time for her to revisit that character, I, I, I know how much she loves Ratman. And I know how much she wants to make that, you know, she'll come back to it. So it's, we can only just stay in conversation and, and I think a lot of it is just, you know, how do we build that storyline? What is it, right? Like, you don't want to just do a Ratma movie to do a Ratma movie. Um, you want to do a Ratma movie if you have a Ratma movie and uh, can make it pretty incredible. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, watching um, like these reactions in real time on like Twitter and stuff, um, you know, the big standout character in, in this uh, new installment is, of course, Mabel. And I'm thinking a Mabel Ratma crossover. Yo, I got awesome. you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, trust me, if we could make the movies that we really want to make, like, yeah, there would be yeah. a Mabel Ratma crossover. Never say never. Yeah, well, listen, I'm, I'm putting I don't know how we make that. If you've got the pitch, bring it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ratma um, goes to hell? What's that? Ratma goes to hell. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because I was like really thinking about it. Like you already kind of can set Ratma in this like hellscape because, you know, maybe that's just like one of their pets or something that yeah. could easily just be um, like maybe like they're equivalent to a dog or something. Maybe it's like Ratma needs his name, also needs his name written in the Book of Witches. <laughs> ah, all right. <laughs> See, all right. I think we need to do it. All, it all begins with another seance, right? There you go. Um, do you, I, so um, it's probably maybe an unfair question to ask, but do you have a favorite segment? Is there like one that you're like, you were um, maybe think is like the like top tier of this um, installment? That is a tough question. No, look, I don't want to sound like that guy that's like, I love all the segments, but they're all special to me just because I'm so close to them. So it's, it's, it, it's hard. It, it It's hard to separate them and, and pick like a single segment. Um, look, it, being as close as I am, right. Like my feelings towards each segment tend, tend to come from my experience working on those segments. And uh, we just had the time of our lives making VHS 99. Um along with shooting some segments back to back in, in VHS 85, these projects are a lot, man. They're like, you know, you're essentially, we, we shot back to back. So it's like, you're going into prep on 10 movies. Wow. You know, yeah. we don't have, we have some, like we roll over some of our crews, very minimal, but because as I told you earlier, we allow the filmmakers to bring in their own HODs. So like, you know, department heads, we're constantly rotating obviously cast and crew um so it's yeah it's it's it, it's a lot man to make these movies but it's also a very special collaborative experience so for me it's honestly man what's what's special for me is just seeing the enjoyment everybody gets out from one particular segment you know it's look it's it, it's fun to see how many people are loving uh to hell and back um yeah flying lotus is 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 one of the most brilliant artists i'll ever work with i love that dude to death it's it's incredible to watch people react to ozzy's dungeon and similar to that gawkers and suicide bid and i i don't think i've ever had more fun working on the set than they did with johannes roberts right doing suicide bid um and having people like al ali you know in a coffin covered in those are real spiders yeah. you know <laughs> I felt like we were torturing her, but she was just like such a champion all the way through. Just one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. And it's like, that's what makes the experience for me. So, you know, I, I, I just love seeing people. I really do. It's like, we, we, we feel like VHS can be a bit of an incubator for filmmakers and, and for us too, right? Like we learn a lot as producers. Um, and so the beauty for me, like I, I can't pick a favorite segment, but I certainly love watching other people pick favorite segments and it's um that's yeah that's the beauty of it is everybody has different sensibilities you know so like, like it uh it's it, it's fun to see the way different people react to 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 um each filmmaker in each segment yeah it definitely is like a, a litmus test almost of like what uh people really uh respond and gravitate towards um like to helen back uh seems to be getting a lot of great praise like um i know um ozzy's dungeon uh is awesome and i know like a lot of people um like i've seen been seeing on twitter saying that's kind of the standout but i mean honestly it's it's like you said they they all really are awesome in their own way like they're, it's hard like even if i had to pick one it would be kind of difficult because again it, it's just they're all so strong, like, you know, with some anthologies, I mean, and, and you've probably seen, you know, as many horror movies as I have. And, you know, the, the horror anthologies, you always have a couple duds. But I, I think here there, there really isn't a weak one in the bunch. It's it's difficult, right? Because no matter what, somebody's going to pick a favorite, right? There's always if you look at it like that, there's always going to be the bunch and the best of the bunch to somebody. But it, it, uh, I, it's just the way that it works when you have five different things of anything you know it's like if you have five bags of Doritos or five different flavors of like fucking Pepsi mm -hmm. so it's it's you can't 
can't judge one over the other. It's just, it's all subjective. And it's uh, that, but the fact that they're all getting love, you know, people, people are uh, digging bitch cat and, you know, <laughs> people, you know, people are terrified of like being trapped in a coffin. You know, people, uh, people love Tyler's homage to like late nineties, like perverted kid movies, getting their come up, come up. And so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, it's, it, I think we deliver a little bit of everything in this movie. Uh, so it just stoked people are, are digging it. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it, it's so funny because like I, as much as I, it's, it's like, I was trying to think, you know, VHS 94, 99, I think they're both equally good. I even might say 99 is just slightly better. Um, but I mean, they're both awesome. I proudly own this. I'm excited for, um, you know, VHS 99 to come out, but uh, it is streaming on Shutter right now. This isn't sponsored by Shutter, but you can watch it there and Shutter's awesome. Um, so, oh, yeah. um, really exciting you also have um another movie that you produced uh coming out on home video and that is this is guar that's coming out october 25th uh so that's that's pretty awesome yeah excited about that i love that movie so much i just i mean I, obviously i'm close to it but uh, the guys in the band are just and i think as you die i hope we portrayed properly but they're just some of the most special artists in the world and like just you wouldn't think a band like war would be as sweet as they are but they are and i think yeah i mean that it's a character piece right like i think i think we were trying to pull the masks off of um you know a bunch of guys that are looked at as probably problematic and and chaotic and extreme and you know it's the whole like don't judge a book by its cover, I suppose, right? Yeah, and um, I loved it. I thought it was one of my favorite movies um, from last year's Fantasia Fest. Uh, fantastic documentary. Um, that, I believe, is already on Shutter right now. Uh, sure is. Awesome, yeah. And I highly, highly recommend checking that out. And again, that comes out on home video um, the 25th, uh, Tuesday, Um so uh yeah now is there any like upcoming projects that you can um like talk about at this point well i mean we have vhs 85 obviously that we've announced we're very close to uh to finalizing that we've nice. shot four of the five segments um so that'll be coming out uh likely in october uh, 2023 or whenever shutter decides to release it um yeah, I got a bunch of stuff in the works, you know, I got a couple documentaries that we're working on, um, a couple features, some with uh, VHS alumni. Um, yeah, keeping busy, man. Nothing that like we can announce just yet, but um, definitely got a couple movies in the pipeline for next year. And, uh, you know, we have Kids vs. Aliens, uh, Jason Eisner's new movie, that I believe comes to uh, in January of 2023. Um, and that'll be on Shutter, I think, like in April. But uh, other than that, that's yeah. I mean, I can't give I can't give up too much, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, you know, I won't sick Mabel on you to, <laughs> to give me any more any more details. But no, that sounds awesome. Like just the fact that like we are like so close to another VHS movie. Like you know, you're thinking like fall of next year. That's awesome. Um, that's like very exciting. And uh, yeah, like all of those. Um, all those things you mentioned sound amazing. Like the um, kids and aliens looks, looks really cool. I actually was like looking up that um, as I was kind of doing my uh, research for this. Um, and uh, yeah, like that, that all sounds fantastic. Um, gosh, I really appreciate you, you um, talking to me today. Uh, again, I'm a huge fan. Uh, you can check out um, this is Guar right now on shutter uh, you can also check out VHS 99. It's that just went up a couple days ago. Um, have to keep all this stuff in my head, like what's come <laughs> out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Thanks. Thanks a lot, brother. I appreciate it, man. This has been fun. Yeah.